What's going on, Mariah? I've been giving you $1,000 every month. Haven't you been sending it to my mom? Where on earth is the money going? I calmly responded to my husband, whose face turned red. Honey, have you looked into your mother's room? My name is Mariah, a 38-year-old housewife. It has been five years since I married my husband, Paul. I used to work as an office employee, but I quit my job when I got married. And now, I live a life centered around housework while working part-time. Since I had always lived with my parents, to be honest, I wasn't good at housework. But now I've become skilled at it. I had helped my mother with cooking, so even from the beginning of our marriage, my husband would compliment me on my delicious cooking. Recently, I started working part-time at a fancy cafe. Surprisingly, the part-time job is enjoyable, and I spend fulfilling days every day. I learned how to make delicious coffee and got recipes for simple sweets that I can make it at home from a pastry chef at the cafe. On our days off, I enjoy hosting a home cafe for my husband. This cake is so fluffy and delicious. Right? Actually, I made it in the microwave. Whoa, that's amazing. This coffee is also great. I made it with coffee beans sold at the cafe where I work. It has a strong bitterness, which goes perfectly with the roll cake. Make it again sometime. Of course. My husband has a sweet tooth, so he's always delighted when I make sweets. The little moments on weekends become more elegant, and my experience working at a cafe is greatly appreciated. I intend to further pursue my hobbies of coffee and pastry making. That's how we, as a happily married couple, spend our happy days together. However, during that time, a very sad event occurred. Dad collapsed? On a day off, my husband received a call and we hurriedly went to the hospital. Dad, are you okay? Oh, sorry. It seems a serious condition has developed. It looks like I'll have to stay in the hospital for a while. After my father-in-law fell asleep, we moved to my in-law's house and spoke with my mother-in-law. Mom, are you going to be okay on your own? Yes, for the time being. But it seems the hospitalization expenses and further medical costs for your father will be quite high. I see. Not true. My father-in-law was suffering from a serious illness. My husband and I felt sorry for my mother-in-law. I'm thinking of sending money to mom. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I'm worried about your mom. And I think she'll have a hard time living alone. Especially in time like this, we should support her. Thank you, hon. After that, we started sending money to my mother-in-law. Are you sure about this? Yeah. Please take it. Thanks to mom and dad, I was able to go to university. That's how we started sending her $1,000 every month. Since my husband was busy with work, I made the transfers to my mother-in-law's account during the day. That even a little bit of financial support would make a difference for my in-laws. A few months passed since we started sending money. My father-in-law's condition didn't improve much. When we visited him, he put on a brave face, but it seemed like he was actually going through a lot of pain. My mother-in-law was deeply worried, seeing her partner growing weaker day by day. My husband and I also felt saddened by this situation. We wished for a miracle, that my father-in-law's illness would be cured. However, our wishes were in vain. About nine months after his hospitalization, my father-in-law's condition worsened and he passed away. My mother-in-law was devastated, having lost her beloved husband. Both my husband and I mourned the loss of her kind father. While watching my grieving mother-in-law break down in tears, my husband and I immediately started arranging and preparing for the funeral. Two days later, we successfully held the funeral, but my father-in-law was no longer with us. That fact left a gaping hole in our hearts as a family. I wonder if dad is resting peacefully in heaven. He was always a busy and active person, 
So imagine he's still saying things like, "There are only 24 hours in a day," and making himself busy even in heaven. While reminiscing about my father-in-law, we gradually regained our energy and spirits. However, even after nearly three months, it seems that my mother-in-law was still overwhelmed by the sadness of losing her husband for several decades. Even when we visited her from time to time, she seemed to lack her usual vitality. Mom, are you okay? I'm sorry for causing you worries. If there's anything we can do, please let us know. Thank you. Well, there's one favor I'd like to ask. What is it? Could you continue the financial support like before? Life has been quite difficult. As the medical expenses for your father's treatment were more than anticipated, was it tough even with the support we provided? Your father had a serious illness, so it was quite challenging. Actually, we were barely getting by. I didn't realize. Of course, I don't mind. What about you, Maria? Yeah, it's fine. I thought it would be good if it could help my mother-in-law regain some of her strength. From that point on, I continued to transfer money to my mother-in-law's account every month, as usual. My husband works for a large company and was rapidly advancing in his career, so our income is more than enough. In addition, I was working part-time, so we had a comfortable life. After about six months since we resumed the financial support for my mother-in-law, my husband asked me something with a serious expression. Maria, are you still sending money to mom? Huh? I was surprised by my husband's sudden question. Of course I am. Why are you asking? Mom said she's still struggling with her finances. She also mentioned that the transfers are coming in late. I would always transfer the money to my mother-in-law's account as soon as my husband gave it to me. I'm definitely sending the money on time. I transfer in the morning after you give it to me. I see. Okay, I understand. Feeling a bit uneasy, I contacted my mother-in-law and arranged to visit her next week. Hi, how are you, Maria? It's nice of you to come. I'm sorry, but I don't have any tea. Would water be okay? Oh yeah, of course. Please have a seat. Saying so, my mother-in-law filled a glass with tap water and placed it in front of me. We happened to run out of tea, you know. Could it be that she's facing financial difficulties with even buying tea? I glanced around the living room and felt a slight sense of something being off. Wait, wasn't there a sofa there? Oh, I sold that. Huh? I thought it could help a bit with my finances. Well, it didn't amount too much, though. Looking around, I noticed that other items of furniture and decorations were missing from the living room. It seemed that my mother-in-law was selling things from the house for money, and my mother-in-law appeared to be thin and gaunt. Are you eating properly? Oh, I'm fine. When I asked about her menu, it became apparent that my mother-in-law's diet was quite meager. What are you having for dinner today? Just vegetable soup. Just that? I have to cut back to make ends meet. That's. Upon realizing how much my mother-in-law was struggling, I was speechless. Oh,、um, excuse me. I need to use the restroom. To calm myself down, I decided to go to the restroom. That's when I noticed that my mother-in-law's room was slightly ajar. In a quick glance inside the room, I made a shocking discovery. There, I saw an expensive limited edition bag from a luxury brand. Back when I was working, I used to buy luxury goods often, so I could instantly recognize the value of the bag. And other items of clothing, but why would my mother-in-law, who had been claiming to be poor and struggling moments ago, have such an expensive bag? With questions lingering in my mind, I went to the restroom. 
When I returned from the restaurant, my mother-in-law was preparing the soup. Maybe you should go back soon? Uh, yes. I'll come back again. In the end, I had no choice but to leave as my mother-in-law suggested. But I couldn't shake off the thoughts about the luxury bag. Because of that, I decided to visit my mother-in-law again on another day, this time with my husband. Knowing that my mother-in-law was going through a tough time, I proposed to my husband that we buy ingredients and have a barbecue party at her house. My husband agreed, and we headed to my in-law's house right away. Mom, we bought lots of ingredients. Let's have a barbecue party. Well, that's delightful. Thank you both. My mother-in-law seemed very happy. However, I was carefully observing her actions. I had prepared plenty of alcohol. If possible, I wanted to get my mother-in-law drunk and make her fall asleep. And today, I had arranged for me to drive back home, so I gave permission to my husband to drink as well. My husband enjoys alcohol, so with the combination of barbecue and drinks, he would surely indulge in them. As planned, my mother-in-law and husband were enjoying the barbecue and alcohol with great delight. Once they were full and had consumed a lot of alcohol, they said they couldn't eat anymore and started to look sleepy at the dining table. While I was cleaning up, the two of them drifted off to sleep. Taking advantage of that opportunity, I turned on the lights in my mother-in-law's room and found the luxury bag I had seen before. Indeed, it was quite expensive. Feeling guilty, but wanted to confirm the truth, I opened her closet. And there, as expected, there were numerous high-end bags and branded clothes. When you add up the total value, it would amount to a substational sum. Moreover, there was a jewelry box in the closet. When I opened it, there were many rings, all of them high-end. There were even recently released new clothing items. This meant that these were not old items, but ones she had bought recently. At that moment, I became certain. My mother-in-law was using the allowance we sent her for buying luxury goods. And yet, she had the adequacy to say that she didn't have enough money and that her life was difficult. I was filled with anger. So, I decided to stop sending money to my mother-in-law. To ensure that she wouldn't notice I had been in her room, I put everything back in its place and returned to the living room. After that, I woke up my husband and we went back to our house. Even when we are leaving, my mother-in-law intentionally said, It was such a long time since I had something this delicious. I'm so happy. While thinking that she could have a normal life if she stopped buying luxury goods, I drove the car. For the next three months, I stopped sending money to her. Then one day, my husband came back from work with a stern face and confronted me. Hey, what's going on? Aren't you sending money to my mom every month? She contacted me. Where on earth is the money? Facing my husband, who had turned red with anger, I calmly responded. Have you seen your mom's room? Huh? Room? I haven't seen it. What about it? I found a large amount of luxury goods in a room the other day. I said that and showed the photo I had taken with my phone to my husband. I had taken pictures of my mother-in-law's room that day. Honestly, he felt uncomfortable doing something like that without permission. But I wanted to know how the allowance was being used. So I investigated. As I said that and showed him the photo, my husband's face turned paler and paler. So you're saying that she put all this with the money we send? That's what it seems like. Maybe she's pretending to be poor. But actually, her life isn't difficult at all. This is unbelievable. Paul had a face that expressed his disbelief. But seeing is believing. 
We decided to visit my in-laws house unannounced. My husband and I drove there, and he used the key he had to enter the house. When we entered the living room, my mother-in-law was in the middle of a meal. Paul? What's wrong? Glancing at the dining table, it was immediately apparent that my mother-in-law was living a normal, if not luxurious, lifestyle. Mom? Is life really difficult for you? Well, these were given to me by the neighbors. Don't try to cover it up like that. Saying that, my husband headed towards my mother in Rose's room. Oh, what's going on? She tried to stop my husband in a panic. But it was already too late. My husband opened the closet and stared at my mother-in-law. What are all these branded items? Th those are the things I had from a long time ago. Lies won't work. These are new releases, right? So that means you've been using your allowance to buy luxury goods? Oh, oh, oh. My mother-in-law was visibly shaken as the truth was revealed. Mom, we were worried because you were so devastated after losing dad. That's why we kept sending you money. So why would you betray us like this? Paul, oh, I'm sorry. Once I started buying, I couldn't stop. While saying that, my mother-in-law broke down in tears. According to the story, my mother-in-law had been ecstatic since my father-in-law was hospitalized. It seems that she found it unbearable to spend the whole day with my father-in-law after he retired. Amidst that, my father-in-law fell seriously ill, giving my mother-in-law the freedom to be alone at home, and she went wild. Living a life going out whenever she liked, buying whatever she wanted, and eating whatever she wanted, the money quickly disappeared. That's when she came up with the idea of lying to us about the medical expenses, being difficult and receiving an allowance from us. Furthermore, it seems that my father-in-law had been paying for his hospitalization and medical expenses from his savings. In other words, it seems our allowance wasn't necessary. My mother-in-law had planned to indulge in luxury at least until my father-in-law's hospitalization ended, but it wasn't easy to break the ingrained habit of overspending. Therefore, it seems she decided to continue receiving the allowance from us, even after my father-in-law passed away. And in order to get more money from us, she pretended to live a poor life in front of us. When I mentioned that I would go check on my mother-in-law, it seems she deliberately prepared by skipping meals and making herself appear worn out from days before. Knowing that she had gone to such lengths to extort money, my husband and I were dumbfounded. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. My mother-in-law said that while prostrating herself on the ground. But the shock of being betrayed was too great for us to forgive. I can't forgive you, mom. I won't give you any money anymore. And I'm cutting off the ties between us. Please, I beg you. If you abandon me, I can't go on living. Just stop buying branded goods. That's all you have to do. You can live on your pension. Anyway, we won't have anything to do with you anymore. Saying that, my husband took my hand and we left. We ignored the numerous calls and messages from my mother-in-law. And we secretly moved to another city without her knowing. A few months later, my husband and I happened to pass by the vicinity so we decided to drive by my in-law's house for the first time in a long while. Of course, we only intended to look at it from the outside. To our surprise, we found that the house had been sold. Surely, my mother-in-law must have continued her spending habits and accumulated more debt. With a sense of sadness, my husband and I drove back home. Since then, we haven't had any contact with my mother-in-law. It has been two years since then. This year, I gave birth to a daughter. 
but I don't think we will introduce your child to my mother-in-law. At least for now. That's how we feel. We intended to live happily, cherishing this family.